Today we're taking a look at the RTX 2060 6GB GPU, and more specifically, the Zotac Gaming Amp model. In 2024, this is really more of a budget, second-hand type of graphics card option, because the RTX 2060 was released in 2019. There are a ton of these graphics cards out there, and I really like them for budget gaming systems since you do have 6GB of DDR video memory, and you get DLSS support, which is quite valuable in my opinion. The RTX 2060 GPU features 1920 shaders, 120 texture mapping units, 48 ROPs, and this model 6GB of GDDR6 memory. That memory operates at about 14 gigabits per second. The memory bus on this is is 192 bit, which is kind of crazy seeing as how some newer GPUs are actually a little bit smaller. As for the gaming amp that I have here, there is a slight pre overclock. The boost clock on the core is about 1800 megahertz. Like I said before, I really think this card is a solid budget card if you're building a lower or middle range type of gaming build in 2024. As for the video output, we have one HDMI 2.0 and three total DisplayPort 1.4 ports, and you can actually simultaneously simultaneously use all four video outputs at once. I really like that. Now that we've gone through the specs a little bit, let's take a look at some synthetic gaming benchmarks, as well as some actual gaming benchmarks. As for the whole system specs, I'll be pairing the RTX 2060 with my Ryzen 7700X on a NASRock X670E PG Lightning motherboard with 32GB of G-Skill DDR5 6000 CL32 memory. First up, we'll take a look at TimeSpy. TimeSpy is a synthetic benchmark. It's a little bit older these days, but the RTX 2060 does score well in my opinion. As for my test passes, they averaged an overall score right around 8400 points, with a GPU score of about 7,800 on average. The CPU score averaged about 14,200, so a pretty good showing. In looking at the Speedway benchmark, the 2060 managed to hit about 1,500 points on average, sometimes a little above, sometimes a little below. For a first generation ray tracing card like the 2060, this really isn't bad, but I wouldn't say that the 2060 is a ray tracing capable card anymore. It really just doesn't have enough of those RT cores, and they're much older generation than newer RTX cards. Now that we got that out of the way though, that's enough of the synthetics. Let's take a look at some gaming benchmarks. For Cyberpunk 2077, I tested 1080p and 1440p with no upscaling enabled. When it came to 4K though, I did end up enabling DLSS quality. For the 1080p low benchmark, this card is more than enough, coming in at an average frame rate of about 97 FPS. The medium preset is actually a mix between medium and high for Cyberpunk, but it came in right around the 75 to 77 FPS mark on average. In switching over to the high preset for 1080p, I saw about 65 to 66 FPS on average, which was a pretty good experience. So I would say I would probably select 1080p high for the RTX 2060 6 gigabyte at 1080p. In taking a look at the 1440p benchmarks, I saw about 66 FPS on low. That dropped roughly to 50 FPS on the medium preset, with the lows dipping into the 40s, so definitely still playable, but you're noticing it's struggling a little bit. When going to the high preset, that average came down a bit. We're looking at about 43 FPS on average. You definitely can get a little bit more mileage out of 1440p on the RTX 2060 by enabling DLSS quality or performance. But generally speaking, I always tell people quality is way better. Moving on to the 4K settings, things start to get really tough for the RTX 2060 6 gigabyte. It's not really a 4K card anymore, but I really wanted to see how it would perform. For 4K low, no upscaling, I was able to average about 32 FPS, but the lows and the frame time spikes were really noticeable, super distracting, you can't play at this. And looking at 4K medium, well, again, definitely not playable. We are looking at something like 24 FPS on average, horrible experience. So I enabled DLSS quality, as that's really what I prefer for upscaling. The 4K low test averaged just over 50 FPS, so I would say it's super playable in my opinion. It's not the golden 60 FPS, but definitely workable. 
and switching over to 4K medium with DLSS quality enabled, we were averaging about 40 FPS though. In my opinion, I probably would not use 4K even with the DLSS quality settings set. I would probably stick to 1440p high with DLSS quality or even medium, somewhere in between. I think that that's going to give you the best visuals and performance for the RTX 2060 6GB GPU. Next up we have Final Fantasy XIV. This game is relatively popular and it's also a bit easier to run on most graphics cards and systems. For the 1080p desktop standard preset benchmark, we're looking at a score that averages right around 29,000 points. This is a very solid experience. The desktop high preset definitely increased the visuals a bit and we saw that average drop to about 21,300 points on average. In checking out the 1080p maximum preset, the system averaged about 19,000 to 19,400 points. The RTX 2060 6GB GPU is definitely capable of playing 1080p maximum for Final Fantasy XIV. So let's take a look at the 1440p settings. I ran the 1440p desktop standard preset and the system averaged about 24,500 points, where the desktop high preset did see that drop quite a bit down to 14,200 points, but it was very playable at that, and the increase in visual quality was definitely a nice bump. As for the 1440p maximum preset, the system averaged about 12,400 points, which was a pretty good experience for 1440p. The frame rates weren't quite as high as medium or low, but the quality was very nice. Moving on to the 4K testing, well, you can definitely run 4K on this card, but you are going to see the lows or the frame times become a little bit of an issue during gameplay. The 4K desktop preset averaged about 14,000 points, so similar to 1440p medium and maximum. The 4K desktop high preset came in at about 7,000 points, so we're definitely seeing a little bit lower FPS and worse frame times here. It's not a super good experience, but you probably could get by, and you might even be able to overclock the memory a bit, and that'll probably up the FPS a little bit as well. Given the sharp drop in score, I would probably stick to the desktop standard, but we do want to press on. We'll take a look at the 4K maximum results. Those averaged just over 6,000 points. Again, this definitely works, but I probably wouldn't play at 4K maximum quality. I would probably target 4K low, maybe mix in some of the slightly higher medium presets, or if I really wanted a high frame rate, I would just stick to the 1440p desktop high preset. Now let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. I ran low, medium, and high, as well as the ultra presets. For the low preset at 1080p, the RTX 2060 6 gig had no issues, averaging just under 110 FPS. Moving up to the medium preset, saw an average of about 100 FPS, whereas the high preset did trade quite a bit of FPS for visual quality, but I think it was worth it here. We're looking at about 83 FPS on average for the high setting. If we crank that preset up to ultra, we really take a chunk out of the overall performance. The system averaged about 54 FPS. It was definitely still a playable experience, but I would probably keep the setting set to 1080p high. Next, we'll switch over to 1440p. As for the 1440p low preset, the system averaged about 80 FPS across the benchmark run, whereas the medium preset averaged about 75 FPS. For the 1440p high preset, the system averaged about 60 FPS. It was definitely still an overall decent experience, so I was relatively happy with that. I did test the Ultra preset, but I wouldn't use it. The average FPS definitely kind of tanked. We were down into the low 40s, about 44 FPS. We were seeing some really sizable frame time spikes and really low lows. Like I said, I would probably stick to either 1440p medium or high. I think that level of quality and performance is ideal for this GPU. You do always have the option of enabling DLSS performance or quality, but I don't like to run up scaling if I don't need to. Anyways, we'll move on to the 4K benchmark. For the 4K low preset, I averaged right around 45 FPS, but I would say the lows are definitely getting noticeable now. 4K medium averaged about 43 to 42 FPS, and again, the lows are definitely making this borderline annoying. So I would say some kind of upscaling is really required to get the RTX 2060 6 gig to run 4K for Red Dead Redemption 2. So I re-ran these tests, 4K low with DLSS quality enabled, and I saw about 52 FPS on average, which was a huge upgrade in my opinion. 
it was definitely more playable with DLSS quality enabled. As for 4K medium with DLSS quality enabled, we're looking at around 50 FPS, whereas before we were in the 43 to 44 range. We have better frame times and higher lows. I probably wouldn't run the RTX 2060 6 gig at 4K in Red Dead 2. If it were me, I would probably run this game around 1440p high with DLSS quality enabled. That's going to give you the best visual quality and the best frame rate, in my opinion, for this card. Next, we're going to take a look at Horizon Zero Dawn. For 1080p with the original preset quality, we're looking at over 110 FPS on average. No problem for the 2060 here. And switching over to the favorite quality preset, the system saw an average about 98 FPS. The visual upgrades, definitely worth it though. Even with the ultimate quality preset enabled for 1080p, we're still looking at about 85 FPS on average, which I think is quite good. So let's go ahead and bump that resolution up to 1440p. The original quality preset had the system averaging about 82 to 84 FPS. In moving to the favor quality preset for 1440p, we averaged about 68 FPS, which I would say was still a solid experience. When I switched over to ultimate quality for 1440p, the average was about 65 FPS. I was definitely seeing some rough frame times and very low lows in the benchmark though. So if you really want to do 1440p ultimate quality, you are definitely going to need DLSS. Moving on to the 4K testing, the original quality preset dips just below 40 FPS on average. That's very okay, but in my opinion, even for a single player game, I really want to see those FPS a little bit higher. So I ran the 4K low preset again with DLSS quality enabled. We managed to average about 64 FPS, which is way better than the non-DLSS result. Frame times were pretty good, and we didn't have as many lows. Moving on to the 4K medium with DLSS quality enabled, we're looking at about 55 FPS on average, which is still pretty decent. I think upscaling is really a requirement to get 4K working nicely on the RTX 2060 and Horizon Zero Dawn. If it were me though, I would probably choose 1440p ultimate quality with DLSS quality enabled. That's going to give us some pretty good visuals and a very nice frame rate. Now let's take a look at the RTX 2060 and Hogwarts Legacy. This benchmark will be running around in Hogsmeade at different quality presets. At 1080p low, the system was averaging about 112 FPS. Bumping that quality up to medium definitely got us quite a bit more visual quality, and the average for the system was right around 100 FPS. In switching over to the high preset, the average benchmark run was looking at about 80 FPS, so definitely pretty playable. The ultra preset, I was able to stay in the 65 to 67 FPS range, but I was starting to see some frame time spikes. Nothing too crazy, but not my preference to play in ultra. Moving on to the 1440p testing, the low preset saw the system averaging about 75 FPS over the run. 1440p medium test averaged about 67 FPS, but the frame time spikes were cropping up here and there. I would say right around 1440p medium, this is basically where you want to kick in DLSS quality. And looking at the 1440p high preset, the system averaged about 55 FPS, but again, we're starting to see some frame time spikes and some lows here and there. The 1440p ultra preset averaged about 45 FPS, so not super great, and the frame time spikes and the lows were definitely noticeable. I probably wouldn't play 1440p ultra on the 2060 without DLSS quality or performance. It really needs the help here. In my opinion, for 1440p, I'd stick to medium or high with DLSS enabled. I did run DLSS quality benchmark runs for 1440p high. The preset averaged 75 FPS, and we got about 65 FPS for ultra. Very playable in my opinion. Moving on to the 4K testing, the 4K low preset was a stuttery mess. We averaged 37 FPS, but with DLSS quality enabled, the system saw about 60 FPS with fewer frame time spikes and fewer lows. The 4K medium averaged a very stuttery 34 FPS. 
we had a ton of frame time spikes and a ton of lows. DLSS quality for 4K medium got the system into the low 50s on average, but we were still having some issues with frame times, so I would say borderline playable here. 4K low with DLSS quality enabled was definitely way more playable. As for my own personal pick for the RTX 2060 6 gig, I would say it's not really a 4K capable card for Hogwarts Legacy. I would probably stick to 1440p high or even 1440p ultra with DLSS quality enabled. The overclocking on the RTX 2060 is pretty decent as well, so I'd take a look at overclocking the core and the memory a little bit. That'll help with the lows and the averages. Next up, we'll take a look at Watch Dogs Legion. The 1080p low preset was a simple task. The system averaged about 118 FPS and the benchmark. As for 1080p medium, that average did drop to about 100 FPS. In looking at the 1080p high test, the system saw about 90 FPS on average, so still quite playable. Moving over to the 1080p Ultra preset, it's a little too much for the 2060 here, averaging about 44 FPS and the frame times and the lows were not so great. I would say this is actually pretty good for the RTX 2060. It's quite a bit older now, about five years. So let's move on to the 1440p resolution. The 1440p low preset averaged around 85 FPS, and the medium preset was averaging about 75 FPS. I did see a couple of frame time spikes on the medium preset though. And looking at the 1440p high and ultra presets, we just can't get a good experience without DLSS of some kind enabled. So I didn't run these stock. I enabled DLSS quality mode for both. So for 1440p high with DLSS quality enabled, the system averaged about 85 FPS. That was a pretty good experience in my opinion. I would definitely play that. As for the 1440p ultra preset, we averaged around 42 FPS. This was not quite as good. I probably would stick to 1440p high with the LSS quality. I did actually start benchmarking this card with the 4K presets. They were not good. Without upscaling, basically not playable. And even with the upscaling, it still really was not very good at all. In my opinion, the 2060 in Watch Dogs Legion is really capped at 1440p high with the LSS quality enabled. During all of the testing, the card was usually able to use about 160 to 165 watts measured through MSI and Riva Tuner. The stock profile for this card has it relatively quiet. When I tested the sound with my cell phone about 3 feet away from the machine, the average was about 31 dBA. The heatsink equipped on the Zotac Gaming OC card is a decent size and it's very good design for a card that uses this much power. I didn't need to crank the fan speed at all in any of my testing, but it is an option if you have a warmer ambient temperature or if you're trying to really overclock, as every couple of degrees that that core temperature rises, you're gonna lose some top end megahertz. The gaming OC model doesn't have any fancy switches, doesn't have any RGB, but to be honest, that's fine in my opinion. This card is really for budget, low, mid-range type builds, and I think that's the best purpose for it. If you're buying this card in 2024, you should really be looking for a solid deal on it. This card does have a nicer backplate in my opinion, and I think the live to game branding does look cool. You'll probably pay a little bit more for this card than one of the OEM pre-built types, but I do like this Zotac card. If you want to build a system on a budget, and especially if you have a tempered glass window, you want a card that when you look at it, it looks nice. And I think the Zotac does look nice. I actually picked this card up from the Zotac refurb store. I'm very happy with it in general. I'll actually be putting this in a build that I'm selling soon for somebody that needs a PC. That being said, if you wanted to buy a new GPU, you didn't want to buy anything used or refurbished, I would probably have to steer you towards a current deal on maybe like a 4060 or an RX 7600. But to be honest, newer cards don't represent a super great value. I think if you can get an RTX 2060 6 gig like this for under 180 bucks, at least in the US, you're going to get a pretty good value out of it. I always tell people when they're buying a computer or a component to set a budget and then buy the best thing that they can within that budget. That helps let YouTube know that people who are researching the RTX 2060 6 gig in 2024 and beyond, that this video might be helpful for them. This video also took a ton of time, benchmarking, editing, all of that good stuff. So definitely would appreciate it if you dropped a like on it and even a comment. If you're into gaming, home lab stuff, 
anything like that, I would definitely say get subscribed to the channel and ring that bell for future notifications. Until next time, keep on gaming.